designer in the industry for the past 18 years and is the author of over 10 craft how-to books, ranging from polymer clay to jewelry making. Today, Linda is combining those two loves and adding in some shaving cream. I have no idea what that means, but it sounds interesting. I'm delighted to welcome Linda Peterson. Hi, Linda. Hi, everybody. Um, I guess what that means is you have to go to your husband's uh, medicine cabinet and steal the shaving cream out of his medicine cabinet like I did this morning. But So we're going to have fun with shaving cream. We're going to have fun with polymer clay beads. Um, the first thing I'd like to know, because I always, I always like this to be interactive, so if you would raise your hand in the room, and it's great to see so many familiar faces, if you have used polymer clay or if you are addicted to polymer clay like I am, raise your hand for me. Oh, good. Oh, my gosh. Look at all those hands being raised. Wow. Yeah, polymer clay is a great medium. And now, if you're in the room and um, polymer clay scares you to death, you've never used it before, would you raise your hand? Because I know clay is kind of a scary word. Well, good. I'm, I'm kind of glad that we didn't get too many people um, saying that they're scared of clay. So, are you interested in learning what shaving cream and polymer clay have in common? Well, we're going to make beads with shaving cream and polymer clay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my camera real quick. I'm going to do it real quick so you don't get busy. Right down here. There we go. And I'm going to show you what you need to do. Now, this is a really simple and easy technique. Let me take off my nose off my camera so you don't see those dangling down. Okay. You're going to need polymer clay. Now, it doesn't really matter what brand of clay that you're using. I use Fimo Soft just because I have a lot of it with me. And um, you're going to be doing just a little bit of mixing. Now, when I talk about mixing, I don't have a special recipe um, because the intensity of the color doesn't really matter. The big thing is you're going to be mixing color into uh, translucent. So what I have, I have uh, an orange. This is called Mandarin Orange. This is called Indian Red. Both of these are warm colors, and I'm going to mix small, I've mixed small amounts into the translucent, that's the key here, to create just an or a reddish orange. It's, it's almost so close to the orange, you can't really tell the difference, but you can see that uh, my big sheet here does have a little bit of red in it. And this is the red that you wanna get. Now again, it doesn't really matter if you don't have it exactly as mine, um, but you want a lighter form of orange. So, I'm going to be hand forming beads today, so I'm just going to tear off some. Now, I've preconditioned this, and all these little beginning techniques are the things that you'll learn about in um, if you take a class with me. In fact, we're going to be having some polymer clay classes coming up here on Craft Tech U next month, and we're going to be working with turquoise. Um, I call this the, uh, the easy coral technique because it really is easy. So, all I've done is I've rolled it into a ball, and we're going to make lentil beads. You use the palm of your hand. If you notice, the palm of your hand has a little kind of cupped. It makes a perfect shape lentil bead. So just pat that down and shape. Let's see here. Shape that however you want that bead. Next thing you need to do is put the bead onto a toothpick. And I'll even tell you how to drill. I drill um, my holes. I always drill my holes with a toothpick, and there's a reason why for that because if you drill your hole with a toothpick, you can see I'm just drilling it in and out. Now, this is about halfway through, so I'm gonna pull it out and I'm gonna put it in the other side. If you drill your hole with a toothpick, then you can string them on any size stringing material that you want to later. When I make beads, usually I make a lot of beads at one time and, and I don't always know what I'm going to do with them. So, put your bead onto a toothpick. Now, let me move this because this is the fun part. Here's the shaving cream, see? And, oh, better shake it up a little bit. Okay, so we've got shaving cream there. And we're going to add some alcohol ink in with the shaving cream. Now the shaving cream acts as a carrier to the ink. And, Got some real high-tech tools here. I'm going to use another toothpick. We're going to mix that in. Doesn't have to be completely blended. But now what you're going to do is you're going to paint that 
onto your bead pretty randomly. And for some reason, this shaving cream is kind of watery, and I don't know why. But you're going to paint this on. You can paint as much of the shaving cream on as you want. You can leave some areas blank. But get your shaving cream painted. Now you're going to take your heat tool, and this is a Milwaukee heat tool. This one actually works the best. It's going to make a little bit of noise. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to melt the shaving cream down. You see, I'm blowing it away. And can you see how, I'll show it to you here in just a second. Let me get this side melted down. It's not completely melted, but I'm going to put it up to the camera here so that you can see. And get that to focus in. At least you can see, I know it's a little fuzzy, but you can see that where the shaving cream melted, the ink got darker. Okay, now I'm going to show you this bead because this is kind of what it looks like when it's done. And what you get is really cool random patterns on your bead. And so it simulates the look of coral. This is a real easy, and you can just make, you know, you can make 20, 30, 40 of these really quickly. So then what you're going to do is you're going to just take and remove this, take it off the toothpick, and let me take this away here. I have a bead baking rack. These are really handy dandy little tools. And I also have, oh, get that way. I have some beading pins. I think that about 40 or 50 beads will fit on this rack. We have baked, when you use your heat gun, you're baking the outside of your bead. So that means that the inside of your bead isn't baked yet. So you still have to bake these on your baking rack or suspend them some way in the oven and use the manufacturer's directions for the specific um, brand of clay that you're using. Fimo now bakes at 230 degrees. So I usually bake these for about 45 minutes or an hour. And you'll see that they get a little shiny after they're baked, and that's good. You can either leave them kind of a shiny matte, or you can add some clear fingernail polish and um, bring them to a shine. Pieces. This is from my book called Bead Techniques. And that's the special that I have on my um, blog today is the book Bead Techniques. And if you order it today, or if you order it off the... Uh, the uh, Cool to Craft Marketplace, I'm going to give you a, a little sample of a little something, something. But anyway, this bead here was done with the exact same technique. It just has more of a yellow underline to it. And so you can see it makes a really nice focal bead. Very simple, very easy. I made this with a uh, bead roller. Now, you don't necessarily have to stick to round beads. You can make two beads. Let's see what I'm doing on time here. These are two beads, and they're done with the exact same way. They have shaving cream on them. You can see the variation of the color there. And these are just a bunch of two beads that I string, uh, did in a triple strand. This is another project that's in the Bead Technique book. And here, last but not least, this shows you a little bit uh, different color to use. The, it's still using the brown shaving cream and the, and the brown ink and everything, but I'm using them on a turquoise bead. And so this is kind of what I call the fast turquoise. This is not the turquoise that you're going to be learning in the class, but it's kind of the fast turquoise. So um, this is, like I said, this is another project from the bead techniques. And I show you how to do all these different styles of beads in there too. So you can see that this project is pretty versatile. The main thing you want to do is you want to um, experiment with the different colors of the background and the different colors of ink to see what kind of effect. I think you'll just have a ton, ton, ton of fun doing this because it's really fun to play in shaving cream.